make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure mind. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in singing our processional hymns when all the world was cursed. make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent reflection upon God's word and our need for his forgiveness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3, beginning at the 14th verse. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Jerusalem. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your ha hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness, and he will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival, so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
epistle is from Philippians 4, beginning at the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the Alleluia and verse in the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we join our voices together in song for our sermon hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for sending John the baptizer to be the one who prepared the way for your son. Lord, we thank you for the words that he brings, the call to repentance, and the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness that comes by Jesus. And we ask this day that you would break your words small and fit for our consumption. In your name we pray this. Amen. Amen. Okay. You may be seated. Many years ago, my family had taken a trip to Camp Arcadia in Michigan. Right on the lake, the view is beautiful, and it is a, a Lutheran camp. And if you've never heard of it, it's worth Googling or looking into. It's pretty incredible. But in the middle of the week, they have a day that is dedicated to getting out of camp as a family and going and seeing the sights in and around Arcadia. And one particular occasion... We were encouraged to go see this spot where the car would mysteriously drive along by itself. Now that sounds rather impressive. And sure enough, we reach just the right place in the road and my dad puts the car in neutral and cautiously takes his foot off the brake and sure enough, the car moved all by itself. And it would be easy to explain that away and say, well, maybe there were supernatural forces there. They were pulling the car or pushing it or whatever. Maybe, maybe it was just the wind. Now, you would hear folks talk about this bizarre phenomenon, and they would refer to it as Gravity Road, or they would claim that the church next door was just pulling you back, or that perhaps they would occasionally attribute the powers to Lucifer himself. However, the true underwhelming explanation was that it is the result of some magnetic pull beneath the surface of the earth. And it begs the question, do you believe me? Have you seen this yourself, or perhaps even experienced it, either there in Arcadia, Michigan, or someplace else? I would invite you this morning, if you have brought your Bible along with you, to turn to our gospel text in Luke chapter 7, beginning at the 7th verse. Excuse me, beginning at the 18th verse. <laughs> The disciples of John come to John while he is in prison. And they tell them about this Jesus of Nazareth, John's cousin, and these things that are taking place. And you can imagine how this conversation might go. And they would say, John, I think your cousin's out of control. Do you know that wherever he grows, Wherever he goes, there's a crowd that grows around him. Do you know that he speaks as one with authority? And so John pulls two of his disciples off to the side and he sends them off to Jesus with a question. Are you the one that we have been waiting for 
or should we be looking for someone else? Is this Jesus, the one that we're waiting for, or are we looking for someone else? What are you looking for? Peace? Jesus says, I come not to bring peace, but a sword. An end to suffering and sickness. Jesus tells his disciples they will suffer much for the sake of his name. Justice. Equitable prosperity. What are we looking for? Maybe we're looking in the wrong places. We want the easy answers. We want the low-hanging fruit. We want the boxes that we can safely check off without making us too terribly uncomfortable. But instead, Jesus comes to us in flesh, not so that we can just see and hear from afar, but so that we can experience the grace of his presence. To witness the way that he works around his table. And so he bids us to come. Take and eat and drink. For there is this physical, tangible participation within our body as we gather as part of his. Sounds far-fetched, perhaps even too good to be true. You see, Jesus doesn't simply say, yeah, I'm the guy, go back and tell John. Instead, he puts actions and experiences ahead of answering. In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many whom were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. One of my favorite movies is Big Fish. And I won't ask for a show of hands because if you haven't seen it, I don't want to know. It's a really amazing way of telling a story. As this son reconciles with his father because he does not know whether the stories that he has grown up hearing from his father are actually the true story of his life. Because it sounds stranger than fiction. And so he takes it upon himself to verify the things that his father has told him and in his father's dying hour the son sits beside his bed and the father says tell me how it ends and immediately the son answers and he says well dad you haven't told me that story And much to the father's joy, the son begins to articulate exactly the way that he would imagine this taking place. And at some point, while he is sitting beside his father's bed, the doctor comes in 
who had been there at the son's birth, and he said, did your father ever tell you how you were born? And he says, yeah, he was out fishing. And the doctor said, no, actually, he was away on business in Wichita, Kansas, and did not make it back in time. And you were born healthy in an uncomplicated delivery. And then he said, which version of the story do you prefer? Which story do you prefer? The one where we say Jesus is fully man and he is this powerfully endowed prophet and rabbi from Nazareth and he comes to bring peace and to speak good words and heal the sick and make people feel better about their lives. Or do we embrace that which is stranger than fiction? That not only was he fully man, but he was fully God. And he came down from heaven into the middle of our mess, wrapped himself in our flesh. Tattooed ourselves upon his hands and his feet. As he hung upon a cross for our sake so that we wouldn't have to. So that he would die and rise three days later. And then appear before his disciples when the doors were locked. That he would come to them and eat. Because dead things don't eat and living things do. And then after 40 days, he ascends into heaven and puts his disciples to work. As Jesus turns to the crowds after these two disciples of John depart, he confronts them with the hard question. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? Did you go out to see some spectacle in the desert where John was out there making a fool of himself and camel's hair and a leather belt eating locusts and honey? Preaching nonsense? Did you go seeking a man in soft clothing? One who would be rather found in a king's court than alone in the desert. Or did you go out to see the fulfillment of God's promise? That he would send one to prepare the way for Jesus. That he would send one to prepare the way for the Messiah. Either way, regardless of why they went, God still gives them exactly what they need, even if they did not know they needed it. So which story do you prefer? God could have snapped his fingers and suddenly the whole of creation is taken up in his wrath. And yet he chooses weakness over power. And he says, don't believe it? Come and see. See for yourself and then go and tell others so that they too can believe. This is a common theme that we see in the Gospel of Luke. The angels appear to the shepherds out in the fields watching their flocks by night. 
And then it says they go and they see this thing that has happened for themselves and then begin to tell all the good news. The Gospel of Matthew tells us the story of the wise men who travel from afar so that they too can see and behold this work of God with their own eyes. And then there's Mary and the other women and Peter and John and the disciples that run to the tomb on Easter morning to find it empty. And everybody knows the story of Doubting Thomas. And then there's the Apostle Paul. Jesus appears to literally knocks him off his feet, blinds him by the light, and calls him in to ministry. If we wait until we can see, then we look in the wrong places. We seek God on our terms. We say, Lord, if you're there, if you are really the God of all creation, then I know you can make this parking spot open for me. <laughs> or perhaps it's something bigger. I know that you can heal my child. I know that you can preserve my spouse. I know that you can save my marriage. And then when things get hard and the ones you love die or the parking spot doesn't open up or your marriage begins to become more difficult instead of easier and we say, God, how dare you? thought you loved me. Instead of seeing God coming to us on his terms, confirming his promises, finding God amidst the suffering and the weakness, the pain, the trials and the tribulations. Where the least believable and most extraordinary truths are where faith overcomes fiction and mystery is embraced over the empirically provable and the impossible becomes possible. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus to turn the hearts of men back toward God. Be the one to proclaim that this is the man, the God, the Savior that you have been waiting for. And as God chose the most extraordinarily ordinary way to speak through men to deliver the best but most unbelievable message to the world, Jesus himself enters into the picture. And speaks not just with words, but with actions. So that God always gets the glory. Now, forevermore. Amen. Amen. We stand as we join together to confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you rescue the daughter of Zion from her enemies and take away the judgment against her. Look with compassion upon your people wherever they suffer for the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom when they are pressured to compromise. Provide when they suffer loss. Give courage when they are afraid and strengthen them in the midst of persecution until you deliver them. Preserve them always in the joyful hope that you will restore all that is lost with what cannot be taken away. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, as you once sent messengers before the face of Jesus to prepare his way, so strengthen and encourage all pastors and church workers as they make known his saving name. Open the ears of all who hear to, re to rejoice, repent, and firmly believe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O giver of all good gifts, look upon the households of your people. Provide companionship for those who are alone. Strengthen the bonds of marriage and equip parents to raise their children in love and faith. Grant that our homes may be places of joy, reasonableness, peace, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you set the prisoners free. Remember those who are incarcerated justly and grant that they might repent, be freed from the clutches of sin, accept the consequences of their wrongdoing, and learn to live honestly and peacefully. Remember all those who are imprisoned unjustly. Restore their freedom according to your will and preserve them in your grace and confidence that you know what is true and just. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions, demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the resurrection on the last day. <clears throat> Have mercy upon all those in need of deliverance, especially Jean, Walt, Reed, Claudette, Dick, Katarina, John, Mason, Amy, Pastor Dutzman, Pat, Regan, Timothy, Stanley, Bob, Leslie, Kathy, Thelma, Audrey, Stephen, and all afflicted with COVID. Heal them in your time and according to your will, and preserve them in the confidence that you will deliver your people from all afflictions at the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of blessing, bless the members of this congregation, especially the Dutzman, Estano, and Fuller families. Give joy and celebration to Ariel, Mark, and Michelle, celebrating birthdays this week. Bless the community of Lakeville, that they may know you as their source and provider. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners, that he might proclaim the kingdom and welcome them in by the forgiveness of sins. As he hosts his supper this day for his repentant people, grant those who partake of this body and blood to be worthy and well prepared, firmly believe in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we invite the kids forward for a children's message this morning.
Good morning. I feel like I need to hide this because before things get poked, Mr. Acolyte, we have a flame. So which candle does this go on today? Can you help Griffin? The pink one. So, in our gospel reading today, we heard about a man named who? John the Baptist. Now, we call him John the Baptizer because of what he did. And what he did was prepare the way for Jesus. So, we spend Advent preparing for Jesus. And so the way that we have been doing that, in part, has been through the Advent wreath and also through our Advent calendar. Don't poke any until I tell you. <laughs> so, which one do we need to start with today? Okay. Okay, Ollie, can you do six for me? closer. We've got the, the stable here. Let's see here. Well, then which one's next? Don't push it in. All right. Why don't you push number seven? This is made for smaller fingers than mine. Okay. What's that? Can you pull that out of there? Sheep. <laughs> a sheep. Okay. So hang on to that for a second. Okay, now what? Now what's your number? Okay. Number eight. Where's the seven? Okay, we need a number eight, right? Okay, Harper, can you do number eight? Oh, there's a number eight. Uh, not seventeen. Did you just punch yeah. number eight? Yeah, you just did number eight. We need number nine. Where's number nine? Shepherd here. Hang on, Ella. All right. Miss Maya, can you do a number 10 for us there? Gotta push a nine in there. Where's number 10? I think it's over on this side. It's a dog. <laughs> Ella, can you do an 11? I need to punch it. Camel. Okay. We got one more, don't we? All right, today's 12. See? Let's see. Joe, can you get the 12? Okay, so our nativity is starting to get full here. We've got a sheep, a shepherd, a camel. That's an awesome, I don't know why there's a camel smaller than the dog. <laughs> and then we've got a horse. 
horse. Get the horse to ride the dog. <laughs> so, Why? now we wait. Because we have how many more days till Christmas? All right, do the math. Yeah, 25 minus 12. 13. Okay, can you bow your head and pray with me? Dear Jesus, give us patience <laughs> while we wait for you. Give us joy as we prepare. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We you take your time now to share that peace of the Lord with one another. stands, we join together to sing our offertory.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat this body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. In the same way also, after they had finished supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Take, drink. This cup is my blood shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The true blood of Christ, 
shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The true blood of Christ shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Depart now in peace, renewed, strengthened, and forgiven through the life-giving gift, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given unto death for your sin. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. now in peace, renewed, strengthened, and forgiven through the life-giving gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
given through the life-giving gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. forgiven through the life giving gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. table of the Lord.
Depart now in peace, renewed, strengthened, and forgiven through the life-giving gift of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand as we join together to thank the Lord. sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.
be seated. A couple of announcements this morning. A reminder, we have our midweek Advent services that continue on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. As we continue on in our Symbols of Salvation series, there are still Advent devotionals available and back. It's never too late to jump into those readings. Also, uh, you may have heard that knocking. I thought Nick had a rogue metronome this morning. <laughs> Uh, so, thank you to John Scope for shooing away the woodpecker <laughs> that was on the outside of the building. <clears throat> also, as there have been a rise in COVID-19 cases, it is certainly not the most popular thing to suggest, but I would encourage you to consider wearing a mask when we gather together corporately. It's not presently a mandate, but it's definitely one that... The elders and I would encourage you to consider participating in, as we definitely want to protect one another and protect ourselves. That being said, we depart in peace. Oh wait, one more. Thank you to everybody that participated in the uh, parade last week, and especially to Peter Fuller for helping coordinate that. That was a lot of fun for anybody that didn't get to see it was a long day that was filled with a lot of candy <laughs> and, and a great deal of joy. So it was a lot of fun. We depart in peace to serve the Lord. Oh, Chris is waving her hand. I missed one. What kind of service is Christmas Eve? <laughs> I'm going to turn to Steve on that one. So Christmas Eve, we have 5 p.m., 11 p.m., and Christmas Day, 9 a.m. Five, eleven, and nine. It's a good couple of days. Now we depart in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.